going on, guys? This is Chuck Conroy, and I'm actually... I'm gonna do my 37th LP ever, one of my favorite games, Earthbound. Probably a game that you've heard of due to its critical acclaim and the many re-releases it's seen across the last several years. Certainly, a game like this doesn't need someone getting the word out, but I want to show you a lot of the things that are still being discovered in this game to this day, and just why it is considered one of the all-time greats. I'm sure that you've heard that this is a good one, but if you've ever dismissed Earthbound as a product of its time, I want to tell you that this is one of the most timeless games ever and is still great to play for the first time today, speaking on behalf of many friends that I've shown this game to. The best way I could describe it is personality driven. Sometimes this practically invents the genre of comedy game, but at other times it's very human and occasionally dark in a lot of the feelings that it explores. And Heck, right now you can see that it dared to have a unique art style in a time where not a whole lot of games did. There's nothing quite like it, and it's something very close to me and to many other people. This is one of those things that seems to inspire a lot of people who play it, but... Of course, that's for everyone to decide for themselves. I want to show you all that this game is, maybe even learning new things along the way myself. This is something that I go back to repeatedly and I've never grown tired of in the 20 years or so that I've been playing it. This is Earthbound. And on the old background that would make a good flannel shirt, we're gonna start a new game, and because I don't like driving you mad with anything other than my incessant babbling, we're setting our tech speed to fast. Same goes for not using mono. Now we can set our style of Windows. I'm not gonna use an old entire joke because it doesn't work because the word Windows is not capitalized. Out of all these different possible text box styles, I like Mint the best, but I like all of them, and you can change it at any time, so for right now, we're gonna go with Little Peanut. No one ever picks him, and I feel a little bit bad for him. I don't dislike any of these styles, and I don't dislike you, Little Peanut. On our naming screen, we have a Don't Care button, showing that oozing personality already. This character's default name, as I'm sure you're familiar with, is Ness, but he has other default names too. Alec, Roger, Will, Brian, Tyler, Lane, and back again. I could go with something other than the default names, but I don't think these characters... I think they're so iconic that they can't be viewed as anything other than Ness. And Paula. And Jeff. Poo too. However, sorry boy, our pet is not really as iconic of a thing that I think could only be viewed as that one. His default name is King, and he is canonically a boy, which I don't put a whole lot of stock into because other default names are Peach and even Misty. But I have a name for him that I think is very fitting and that I'd like to use. Uh, no, not Misty. <laughs> not Misty C. <laughs> I thought it was selecting the first thing because I hadn't typed in anything yet and I'm used to how newer menus work. Now, while I'm typing this in, enjoy some guitar stylings from the great Shigeru Miyamoto. Not a joke. This song's actually by him. Sar. It's an awesome name for a dog. Someone should totally name their dog that. And it's synonymous with King. We're going with it. Favorite homemade food. The default option is steak, but in the theme of synonyms, I have something that's a little sillier that I'd like to go with. Bees! No. I was gonna just write beef, but we got a lot of room to play around with. Let's go sillier. Beef. I think we'll make that our favorite homemade food. I don't think it ever comes up in serious context, so we can go a little sillier with that one. Favorite thing. This is going to determine what something is called. I don't want to get too specific with what this exactly means. The default name is Rocket. So this time, we're rolling. <laughs> I wanted to name at least a few things differently, cause, well, I've already done all the default names more times than I can think, and I wanted to separate this one a little bit. Okiska. Okiska. With everything named, we are sure. Yo! The year is 1990X.
Onet, a small town in Eagle Land. Ness's house. Speaking of someone who is utterly terrified of all the little tiny sounds in your house in the middle of the night that you can't explain no matter what you know, it that would terrify me out of my wits, but we're going out because of course we are. And we're the slowpokes getting out of bed because we came out just in time to see the lights turn on. Let's go check up on our family. Hey bro, did the sound wake you up? Were you freaked out? Maybe. Do you think mama let me stay up late tonight? Uh, I can't seem to fall back asleep. This is the worst, when you get woken up by something that's not your fault, and you can't fall back asleep, and you got school in the morning, and you try to explain it to your parents, but they don't care, because you gotta do that. Well, we steal a gift from whoever she was wrapping that for, and we get ourselves a cracked bat. The first of various equipment pieces that we're going to be seeing. Uh, we're going to equip that, because of course we are. It's no good if you don't. Don't you know how these things work? And we go downstairs. Now, we could talk to our mom, but as we've established, she probably doesn't want to hear anything that we have to say, but our dog probably does. You're the only one who understands me. Besides humans, dogs also sleep at night. Why aren't you asleep? We've kind of been over this already. Now, uh, I kind of want to satisfy my burning curiosity, so while she's not looking, hurry up and go out the door. Off we are. I want to return home, but the road is closed. People are taking this meteorite situation too seriously. No problem here. <laughs> I guess that's lining up with his opinion. If you check things, it says that normally. <laughs> that was actually really good timing to have that come up for the first time. Don't panic, it's just a, what? Meteorite that, who? Uh, fell? I just wanna, what? Go home. Onet police are infamous for closing roads if something is going on. We are going for the world record in closing roads. Uh, no, most roads close at a time, longest time closing roads. Uh, I'm not really sure what a, angle that they want to tackle that from though, but I believe in them that they can do that. So this whole scene of the meteorite crashing and us having to go out and explore um, and find out what's going on right now. This whole scene originally was going to take place during the day. It was one of the very last things that was changed during development to make this at nighttime, and I welcome the change. I think it was a very positive one as um, it just generally makes it feel a lot more mysterious and I think adds to the memorability of it. Sneaking out at nighttime is something I think everyone's done from time to time. Don't take that as encouragement. Oh, hi. Pokey, my brother, ran off here to chase after a police car. He said, Picky, you should stay home. So I'm watching our house. Mom and Dad aren't home yet. They went out to an elegant restaurant. What's going on with our neighbors? Uh, uh, wow, well, uh, you, you must be really... He, he doesn't want me to leave. I, I can't get out of this. <laughs> I guess he's really scared and doesn't want to be left here alone at a time like this. I mean... Who can blame him? I said myself that I'd be terrified in the situation, but that was kind of funny. Don't you know what time it is? Get your butt home, pronto! As you're seeing, already, lots of personality just seen, and even the most minor of characters, everyone has something worthwhile to see. Kids are wandering around and I'm hungry. I hate my job. It is worth your time. If you're going to play Earthbound for maximum enjoyment, I recommend that you talk to everyone that you see. If you want to know the mark of a truly great game, I estimate that I have played the Earthbound more than 30 different times, and every time, I learned at least something new. I don't know every line of text in this game, and it's likely that I never will. As a result of that, I won't be talking to everyone, but I will be talking to everyone that I personally consider worth talking to, everyone that's just kind of on the beaten path, and everyone that I have personal memories with. I like this game a lot, and the text is easily the most enjoyable part. We'll grab another present. I guess our sister just likes wrapping presents all over the world. We get a bread roll, and if you ever aren't sure what anything does, you know what to do. Shout to the heavens for help! And the magical text of helpfulness will float down from the skies. Uh, when you eat it, you'll recover about 30 HP. Health recovery works a little bit differently. It does not do a fixed amount. It is within a certain range, with the stated amount being the average. You know, 
changes in your body occur at different stages of digestion and you absorb different amounts of calories depending on what part of the process that you're in. It's very realistic. Hey, Ness. Hiya, buddy. A meteorite fell down and went boom. It was a real mess for a while. I was fine because I always eat garlic and work out to help make my body stronger. However, the weaker citizens probably fainted. I also want to tell you... Uh, whoops! Uh, I almost told you about my... Uh, by the way, Ness, uh, did you check out my billboard? I wrote the message myself. That's my real job, you know. I'm a billboard guy. Why don't you check out my work? Treasure Hunter, this is Liar X Adjurate's house. <laughs> See what I mean by even the throwaway characters having really good stuff about them? I like him, even if he's not trustworthy. Meteorite looks different than usual. It's a strange and marvelous, as well as mysterious. Ooh. I've never seen a meteorite that looks anything like that before. I remember as a kid I thought it looked like some kind of weird pizza or something like that, but hey, you know, me taking art styles literally as a kid, I think we all did. Nice timing, Ness. Will you do something about Pokey? He's driving me nuts. Are you two friends? Not as far as I know. You're not friends, but aren't you neighbors? Come on, help me out here. Hey, Ness. Don't be rubbernecking. You're getting in the cops. Oops. Uh, I mean the officer's way. You can go home now. Tomorrow, I, Pokey, will tell you more about the strange meteorite. I'm fine here, but you're bugging the officers. Shh, shh. Clear out, get out of my way, clear out, get out of my way, clear out, get out of my way, clear out, of way out, get my. O oops, that, my mistake. I mean, get out of my way. Well, Pokey is just uh, humping the sign and shoving his gut in the face of the officers over and over again. Well, we can't do anything here, so with nothing else, I say we just kind of head back and go home. And we hope that... That terrifying face that stares directly into your soul and beyond it is not there waiting for you to come home after sneaking out. Welcome home, Ness. It's not necessary to talk about it tonight. It's late. Scoot off to bed now. With a face like that, I'd rather not be sleeping in proximity to you at a time like this. Oh, Ness, you don't understand the importance of a good night's sleep. I've changed my mind. I think refusing you is even scarier than falling asleep. We'll take our chances and hope we're still here in the morning. Later that night. Someone's knocking at the door. What an annoying knock. I don't know, I, I usually knock the door like that. Uh, I'm, I'm annoying, aren't I? Well, my neighbors never told me that. My land, who could be knocking at the door at this time of night? Would you answer it? I, I stand by this. I've always felt this so weirdly. Okay, like, she's the mom here, and I'm just a kid. And at 2 a.m., if somebody's knocking on the door loudly, just banging it in, she's making me answer it, you know? Could be somebody with a gun or anything like that, but no, it's just Pokey. Hey, listen to what I've got to say. When I took Picky to the place where the meteorite landed, oh, good evening, ma'am. You're looking lovely as usual. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, the police that were guarding the meteorite landing left suddenly to deal with the sharks. You know the sharks, they're the local ruffians. And they were really going wild. Suddenly I noticed that Picky was gone. I blame the cops. It certainly wasn't my fault at all. My dad gets back. I know I'm gonna get it. You're my bestest friend. Won't you help me find Picky? If you refuse me, I'll say something that'll cut you like a knife. Will you come with me? Like we have any choice. I like these endless... Oh, oh he says I can't say anything to hurt you. I guess I'm learning something new already. Wow, that was faster than I thought it was. How embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, good buddy. Let's blow this popsicle stand. Before we go, why don't you say goodbye to your mom? Don't you agree, ma'am? <laughs> now I'm in the giggly mood. Uh, it's gonna be hard to get me out of it. I love this game. Uh, excuse me, mom. I know we're not really on talking terms after I snuck out, but sheesh. I know that dog is unreliable, but you should take Sar along. The crack bat in Tracy's room could help out at a time like this. No matter what anyone says, you're a courageous, strong boy. You're my very own natural-born fighter. You'll go far. 
Remember to go for it. But I think you should change out of your jammies before you leave. Into our iconic day attire. If we had talked to mom the first time going out, we would have changed into our clothes, but it wasn't at all necessary. And besides, this way it built up the suspense a little bit. Talk to Tracy. I'll do everything I can to help you. Good luck on your adventure. You might get hungry along the way, so here is a cookie. Cookies are the worst health recovery item, I think, for the most part. I guess there's some technicalities to that. It only recovers about six HP. You can also leave anything you don't need with me. Do you want me to hang on to something? You just want to take back your cookie. You're a taker backer. Be careful. Duly noted, I'll be careful of anyone who wants to take my cookies. Yeah, sure, you're cool. Whatever. <laughs> Mom is awesome. I, you know, kind of seeing all these lines again in rapid succession, I knew about them though, but our mom is really snarky. I like it a lot. All right, you go out in front and I'll follow at a safe distance. Let's get going. And not at all necessary, but if we check our dog, he has no choice but to obey us. Dogs are people pleasers after all. We have yet another join to our ranks. What, did the phone want to come too? Let's answer the phone. Hello, it's your dad. Work to exhaustion when you're young. Have you ever heard a weird saying like this? Just remember, I'm always behind you 100%. Don't be... So my father's pokey? Don't be afraid. I know you're brave. You can do it. Don't forget to call me periodically during your adventure. I can make a record of your progress when you call me. Oh yeah, I deposited $30 into your bank account. Do you have your ATM card? Withdraw money from any cash machine and buy whatever you need. Good luck. My boy. Mm, I feel like such a hero. What? Well, uh, the father of a hero, at least. <laughs> Slam. Beep. If you step out of your house and immediately step back inside. You can come back here at any time to heal, complete with some mother personality. You're hungry already. Why don't you have some beef? Pokey, you don't like beef, do you? Too bad! Ah, <laughs> uh, the secret ingredient is snark to her homemade cooking. I'm, you know, the way that I'm imagining this is that Ness's favorite food just happened to be beef and that the way he said it the first time when he was maybe like three years old or something like that sounded really funny, so to make fun of him, his mom just says it that way every single time, and he rolls his eyes at it and just wants his mom to stop it. She's a snarky mom. I could see her doing that. It's my own little headcanon for what's going on here. And just in time for me to be done imagining things that are funny, we have our first of many battles, the Coil Snake. They are completely unremarkable in every sense of the word. There is no reason to fight these guys if you can possibly avoid them. They only move when you move on the field. You fight enemies when you touch them, which was actually a pretty innovative thing for the time. And that should be it. Some exciting note to begin on. They don't drop any sort of item. When beaten, they only give one experience point. They're not really all that worthwhile. You can avoid fighting them if you know that they only move when you move and you just get them stuck on a tree or something like that. I'd suggest doing that more off as often as you possibly can. Going onward, uh, we're really not running into a lot of fights here, actually, but we got another new enemy here. We got a spiteful crow. These guys are a little bit more dangerous, actually. Uh, they zigzag around whenever they see you. They have a bit of a <laughs> pokey complaint in this. <laughs> I guess that gets into something else here. Um, our dog is doing a lot more is doing a lot more good to us than Pokey is. Pokey doesn't ever attack, and in fact, he has quite a few funny action Pokey complain. He really likes complaining to us a lot. Spiteful Crow stole our cookie there that we so lovingly got from Tracy. However, I like to think that we got it back. Every Spiteful Crow that you ever defeat will give you a cookie to hopefully make up for the item that they stole. I'm very thankful they didn't take the bread roll because I like that thing. And we grow to level two. Offense went up by one. Going over the stats, offense does exactly what you think it is. It's your damage. Max HP went up by three. HP does exactly what you think it does. PP. Unfortunately, that went up because we have no way of getting rid of it. But now we do. Life Up Alpha is our very first PSI attack. We have psychic abilities. This does exactly what it says on the tin. It makes your life go up. That's probably going to be a full heal at this point in time, just because we don't really have that much health, and it's actually a pretty solid healing move. Um, one of the better things that we'll have available to us for a while. Uh, we're gonna have to fight you, aren't we? Uh. 
Whoa! Uh, right! Okay, those are smash attacks! Sheesh, uh, I almost feel sorry for that coil snake. Oh. Sar, maul that. <laughs> I kind of want to go back a little bit because there's, well, no, I guess it's not really that necessary. We'll have plenty more opportunities to fight the one enemy that we didn't see. Hey, Ness, I was too busy to investigate, but I heard a child's voice on the hilltop. I'm a busy man, uh, but when I do a job, I do it well. I'm a man's man. And we keep going up. We see our prize at the very top of the hill, and we can finally go onward. Oh, woof! If I knew this was going to be such a scary place, I wouldn't have come along. I'm out of here. He actually makes it back to the house. That is one smart dog to make it back all the way from up here. Caution, there are still lots of fires burning here and there. It's hot! Ah! Oh. You woke me up. Pokey, I've been looking all over for you. You see, Pokey got scared and ran away. Well, I'm glad that you're okay at least. Let's go home now. I bet mom and dad are worried sick about us. Jeez, sometimes I wonder which of us is the real big brother. Picky joins up with us. Lose a party member, gain a party member. Ness, do you hear that sound of like, do you hear that buzzing that sounds like a bee flying around? Not at all, I think that's audio limitations. Oh, come on, you must hear it. A B I M, not. I'm from ten years in the future, and in the future, all is devastation. Gygus, the universal cosmic destroyer, sent all to the horror of eternal darkness. However, you must listen. Where I am from, there is a well-known legend that has been handed down from ancient times. It says, when the chosen boy reaches the point, he will find the light. The passing of time will shatter the nightmare rock and will reveal the path of light. You see, it is my opinion that you are that boy, Ness. This I believe. Gygus' monstrous plan must have been set in motion somewhere on Earth. If you start to confront the enemy immediately, you may have time to counter the evil intentions of Gygus. Three things are of utmost importance. Wisdom, courage, and friendship. The legends from the ancient times tell of three boys and a girl who defeat Gygus. I will tell you more later. Go now, and do not be anxious about the future. You have much work to do, Ness. Did you listen to what I told you? Thank you for listening to my long story. You are as exceptional as I expected you to be. Yes! Uh, it looks like you're really in a lot of trouble this time. Three boys, he said. Uh, I'm not one of those three, am I? Because I'm not into this kind of thing at all. Jeez, my heart is almost pounding right out of my chest. I don't know, Pokey. We can't really get a clear look at Buzzbuzz Buzz to know what gender they are, so maybe Buzzbuzz Buzz is the girl and we're the three boys? You never know where that's going. Now, um, to kind of give you an idea of some of the things that are... Well, actually, no. Let's talk to you first. Ness, buddy, I have something to tell you, and only you. Can you come visit me later? Alone? Doesn't matter what he would have said, anything would have sounded creepy with that sound effect placed at the end of it. What I was wanting to say is that if you want an idea of things that are still being found in Earthbound to this day, that light that Buzz Buzz uh, traveled back in time through, that is able to be controlled with the Player 2 controller if you have it plugged in. A lot of things in Earthbound are able to be controlled with that, but that's one of the unique things that can only be controlled with it. It's a tiny little thing. I don't really know why it does that, but it just sort of does. And for those of you that, you know, have always kind of wondered what Buzz Buzz looks like, how he's just very small and nondescript here, um, wonder no more. As far as I can tell, this is canon. In a manga that was published in Japan, you get to see Buzz Buzz up close. Feast your eyes on this! <laughs> I'm kind of glad that in a moment of seriousness like that, you don't actually get to see what he looks like, because... Just... Ouch. <laughs> He's stated to be a rhino beetle and not 
supposed to be similar to a B in the Japanese version, so as far as I can tell, that's canon. But our laughter ends quickly. It's been a long time, Buzz Buzz. You've been successful at foiling Master Gygus' plans, but... Buzz Buzz, you must now surrender. You are no longer a hero, but just a useless insect. I'll stomp you hard. Our first major battle, the Starman Jr. At the beginning of every fight, Buzz Buzz will cast up PSI Shield Sigma. This makes any sort of psychic attacks on your party disappear upon contact. Pinky is a little bit more helpful than his brother. He actually tries to fight the enemies. Whether or not he succeeds is kind of yet to be seen, but um, I will say if Picky ever does get the kill on a boss, it is kind of funny. Yeah, he does one damage every time. As you see, Buzz Buzz hits like a truck, and apparently Ness thinks he does too, but only does about 10%. You're immune to any attacks that he's able to do to you, and this fight's a little bit strange. You are able to skip this fight by not walking through that section. How would you do that? Well. All enemies disappear as soon as Buzz Buzz joins you. What you do is lure an enemy up to the hilltop, keep it on screen while you talk to Picky and meet Buzz Buzz. Then once you come up, uh, then once you go to that enemy, lose the fight on purpose, and you will be able to just go back. Uh, you'll respawn back at Ness's house and be able to just keep walking forward without that. Aw, oh, Buzz Buzz got the kill. No, oh, that's boring. I like it when at least Ness gets it. I've seen Picky kill it once. Get 16 experience, and we go to level three. Oh baby, offense went up by three. Vitality went up by one. Vitality is a new stat. This means that for every point of vitality that you gain, you'll get roughly 15 HP on that level up. IQ went up by one, which uh, IQ makes so that PP, I believe, goes up by roughly five every level up. Wow, those are some really bad averages, actually. Um, we did a little bit worse than that. Whew, I was taking a big chance there. He came from 10 years in the future to kill me, so we can't relax yet. From now on, you'll be fighting enemies sent by Gygus, as well as humans who have evil thoughts. They'll definitely make trouble during your adventure. Animals are also becoming violent due to Gygus' influence over the evil in their minds. It is the truth. So listen! Things are going awfully dire. Things are really building up. Before anything else, I guess we might as well do the right thing and return these two home. Where in the Sam Hill have you boys been? I'll have to think of a suitable punishment. I would like to tell you that Pokey's mom, her canonical name is Lardna. Lardna. Mm hmm. I'm really sorry that my kids troubled you so much. Both of you are really going to get it now. That sound effect gets me every time. Okay, I have a few things to say about that sound effect, actually, before we move on. I know that it's implied that he's, like, yelling at the kids or something like that, but as a kid, I couldn't help but interpret it as him firing a laser at them, and I remember I busted out laughing and would tell my friends that that was one of the funniest things in the game. But in the Japanese version, it's a little bit more serious. You hear this sound instead. <laughs> If you go upstairs, it is implied further that Pokey's dad hits his kids, and Pokey even says that his butt hurts. It's pretty dark stuff, but I wouldn't really say that the chewing out that we're getting here is any sunshine and rainbows either. I'm tired of your family living next door. We've loaned your father a lot of money. It may have been $100,000 or more. Oh, well, I just got 30 of it, so I only have 99,970 to go. Thanks for giving me my long-term goal, buddy. Well, I guess it really could have been less. But because of the loan, my family and I now live in poverty. My husband is much too lenient with, the, with children. Oh, well. Nice guys finish last. That's the story of our life. Aye! I think it's a dung beetle! I'll smash your guts out! I was much weaker than I thought, so you must now begin your adventure. See you. Oh, I just remembered. Listen to my final words. To defeat Gygus, your own power must unite with the Earth's. The Earth will then channel your power and multiply it. There are eight points that you must visit. 
make these places your own. Each of these locations is your sanctuary. One of them is near Onet. It is called Giant Step. Go there first. Do you understand? All right. You are a very intelligent young man and, oh, the pain. Everything is getting dark. Ugh. Before I pass on, I want to give you something. It is the soundstone. You can record the melodies from the eight your sanctuary locations into this stone. It is an awesome item. By the way, I'm almost gone. Did you want to hear the story one more time? Good. It's already dawn outside, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm fading fast. Ugh. And so our adventure begins. Buzz Buzz, we won't let you down.